custom properties are a great way to share values across the the room that you're currently in without having to have any reference to specific items so say if you wanted to set your player icon you could set that in a custom property and other players could grab that custom property without having any reference to your player this is done by using hash tables a special photon network hash table not the standard one in the c-sharp language and we'll be talking about that of course and with that said you don't really want to set custom properties too frequently because it can create a lot of garbage collection and a lot of network waste so it's ideal to use it for things that won't change very often I'm going to demonstrate custom properties by generating a random number before I even join a room and I'm just gonna have a little button set up that will let me do that so I want to go ahead and design that button now this is going to be in the create or join room canvas so I have my room listings and my create room menu I'm just gonna make another one here and I will call it random custom property generator and uh, this is going to just like I said be a very simple button so I'm gonna add a raw image and uh, let me let me zoom out a little bit on my scene here so that I can kind of move it around there we go I'm gonna move it up here to the top right and I'm going to add a text component and I'm gonna size it up to the size of the image and I will center it and I will change the size to something more reasonable uh, 50 is pretty easy to read so let's go ahead and go with that two numbers fit fine so I think that'll be fine um, go ahead and make a raw image and add a text component and make it large enough to fit two numbers and then once you do that let's go to the random custom property generator object in the hierarchy and add a button script and then, like always click the plus sign and then we'll populate that in a second since this is in my rooms scene it is part of UI I'm just gonna go ahead and make a new script under scripts UI rooms and I know this is kind of a bit cluttered uh, but this isn't gonna be a full project or anything so I'm just gonna throw it all in here for now and and you know hope for the best <laughs> so I'll make a new uh, C sharp script and then do random custom property generator I don't advise hoping for the best when you're programming that is really bad advice I was joking and once that script is made I'm gonna go ahead and open it up first thing I'm going to do is make a new hash table and I'm gonna do it as a field so I'm gonna do private exit games dot client dot photon dot hash table and I will call it um, you know I'll just call it my custom properties it doesn't really matter it's gonna be a quick example equals new and then it's gonna automatically fill out exit games client photon hash table I'm calling the full path here because there as I mentioned there are different types of hash tables and if you don't specify uh, you'll get an ambiguous warning or error actually I believe because C sharp won't know if you're talking about the, the internal hash table or photons hash table so that is why I'm typing out this long mess now I'm going to go to the bottom and do public void on click button and I'm going to get rid of update and start and I'm gonna make a private void set custom number and then on click I'm going to call set custom number and I want to update the text field as well that we made on the UI so that we can see our custom number so I'm gonna do serialize field private text and it's not gonna see it right away because I have to use unity engine.ui and then underscore text now I'm going to generate a new random class but I'm gonna be using system.random not the one built in to unity I'm going to call it rnd equals new system dot random and I'm going to do int result equals rnd dot next and I'm going to go between I think 0 and 99 just to keep it two digits and I'm going to do underscore text dot text equals result dot to string 
and now we need to set it to our custom property. So to do that, it behaves much like a dictionary. Um, so we're gonna do my custom properties, and then I'm gonna put these little flat brackets here, whatever they're called, I have no idea. And I'm going to set the key name. As you can see, it says object key, but it's actually expecting a string in this case. I'm gonna say random number as a key name and the value will be result. I believe the types you can set are uh, native types or value types like um, float, double, string, integer, and so on, and the types that Photon supports out of the box. And if you're wondering what those types are, just do a search and do class, you make sure you have entire solution checked so that it searches your project as well, Photon. So I'll do class custom types and then go ahead and search. And you should see it here under internal static custom types. And you see vector two, three, quaternion, and player. So those are the types you can use as well. Uh, you can also use byte arrays too, just keep that in mind. So if you ever need to serialize a class, you can pass it in as a byte array. Otherwise, if you want to pass it in as a type, you have to make a custom type. And that's something we'll talk about way down the road in the series. So going back to my random custom property generator. And now to set them, I'm going to do photon network. And it looks like I need to add the namespace. So using photon.pun, dot local player, dot custom properties equals result. This is a get or set, um, so you can you can use this to get the custom properties for a specific player or you can use them to set them only on your local player. Now I typed in result, I meant to say my custom properties because result is the number, my custom properties is the hash table. And go ahead and save. Now I'm going to go back to Unity and I'm going to set up the on click action. So random custom property generator under my uh, hierarchy there. I'm going to drag the script into the on click. You can also, okay, so I actually don't have the script attached yet. I just noticed that. So I'm going to go add component random custom property generator. And I need to assign the text component to it. And now I'm going to drag this object into the on click. Now, once you drag this object in, you can actually go to no function and then choose the script if you like, or you can just straight up drag the script in as it's attached to that object. So going to the on click button, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. Okay, so we got our button set up. Let me go ahead and click it. So I can see that it is changing the numbers. So it seems that at least this part of it's working. Now we need to make sure that it's going across the network properly. So I'm gonna hit stop. I'm gonna go down to my player listing script and open it up. And here I have the set player info where I pass in the player. This is where I'm going to get the custom property and add it onto the text as well. To do that, I'm going to do int result equals player dot custom properties and then I'm going to reference the random number the one that we set previously so I'm gonna go over to random custom property generator and just make sure I got that right looks like it is that's one thing to keep in mind you should probably be using constants whenever you're dealing with this so you don't accidentally make a typo in your string now you're gonna get this error cannot implicitly convert type object to int. That's because it does not know what it is out of the box. So all we have to do is just pass int in front of it or whatever type you'll be dealing with. And then where I set the text, I'm going to do result.toString plus and just add a little comma in there just to separate that from the player nickname. I will save my script and then go back to the editor. Now I already made a build of this so I can test it out. If you want to build and verify it on your end, go ahead and pause the video and then once you have the build open, resume.
I have already clicked this a couple times. I'll do it a few more just to show you that the number is changing. And I'm going to make a new room. I can see that's showing up locally, so that's good. Now I'm going to hit play in the editor. When I see that room pop up, I'm going to join it. And I'm going to expect to see 72 next to my name. So if I go up here, I can see my name is the punfish3818. When I join the room, I do see the 72 next to my name and the 54 as expected next to the name of the other player. So that indicates that our custom properties are working. And as I mentioned, they behave similar to a dictionary. So going back to my random custom property generator class, you can also remove values. So I can do underscore my custom properties dot remove and then pass in the property name that I want to remove. There are other options as well. For example, you can get all of the keys and all of the values if you wanted to iterate through them and see what there were. You could also get counts and a few other options as well. I'm going to go ahead and delete the remove call, save my script, and then jump back to Unity. And before moving on to the next video, just keep in mind that if you try to pull a custom property and it has not been set yet, you will get an error. So if I do not set the custom property on, say, player 1 and player 2 tries to get that property, it will receive an error, it being player 2 indicating it doesn't exist. Properties do not let the clients know that they have changed either. If you want to get an updated value, you must retrieve the property value manually. With that said, I don't want to have to click my, my button here to set the custom property every time I launch the game. So I'm going to check to make sure the key exists before I assign or get that value actually. And that would be in the player listing script. So I'm going to go back to player listing. And here where I get the property, I'm going to check and make sure it exists before I try and fetch it. To do so is very easy. I'm just going to do if player.customProperties.contains key. I'm going to type in random number. Then I'm going to execute the code below. However, I need to just move the result around. Let's put it up here. I'm going to set the default to negative 1. And then I will assign it as it should be according to the properties if the property exists. And just to show this is working, I'm going to save and go back to Unity. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And I'm going to click the button so it generates a random number. So I'm setting the property at this point. I'm going to make a random room. And I see that the property is still being fetched. So that's good. Now I'm going to hit stop and then play immediately after. This time when I create the room, I'm not going to touch that button so it's going to be unset. So I'll hit create room. And I see negative 1 as default value, which means the property could not be found. So this shows that the code is working as intended.